be very, very quiet. I'm hunting wabbits. <laughs> Hello, everyone. Dennis Gebhardt here with Guru Nation, welcoming you to another episode of Rabbit Trails, along with my sidekick, my partner, Max Masano. Max, how you doing, brother? I'm all right. How are you, Dennis? I am good, man. I am good. Uh, look, I hear it's snowing in your neighborhood. Man, it's like it's like blizzarding right now, actually. Yeah, I know. Uh, you know, I, I just did see you just sent me this little video. I think it's really kind of interesting to see that snow coming down. For all of you in the West Coast where we're not getting snow, maybe this kind of gives you an idea of what it's like, how you plan your day. And of course, today is Super Bowl Sunday, so uh, good thing you're locked in. You're going to stay in, and uh, it'll be a good day for that. You can eat uh, eat appetizers and and have a good afternoon. That's right. Anyway, right? <clears throat> so we are here again, and very very excited. First of all, I want to start off by thanking all of you who have been following us. I have been getting lots of compliments. People have been saying they're enjoying Rabbit Trails, and we're so excited about that. And um, for those of you that are here for the first time, let me tell you a little bit about rabbit trails. Why is it called rabbit trails? Because um, in our industry today, especially, <laughs> you find that a lot of times we get to focus on a subject and we end up going down a rabbit trail. We don't know how we got there, but it, it just happens because there's so much information out there. There's a lot of opinion. There's a lot of assumption. There's a lot of uh, speculation and a very, very little bit of actual science. So our job here at Rabbit Trails is to kind of sort through all of this information and find out what pieces actually work, what pieces aren't actually accurate, and help you to create a pathway for your success in hair color. And as we always say, you know, we start most of our programs by saying, look, we are not here to make fun of be condescending, um, you know, or anything like that. Um, there's probably some things we're going to say today that are going to contradict your belief system. And so that's okay, because we believe our mission is to provoke your thought process. And hopefully we will be able to do that today. But it's important for everyone who's trying to learn to master the skill of hair color, that they have access to the most accurate information possible. For many of you, you've spent your entire career just kind of macheteing your way through this industry because if you're like me or like Max, when you went to beauty school, we didn't get all the pieces. That means I'm not angry at beauty schools because they did what they were supposed to. They taught us to pass an exam, but um, there were some pieces that were missing. And hopefully today we can help you discover those pieces. We call them nuggets or we call them uh, information bombs or whatever we want to use to describe them. But they're little pieces that will hopefully um, help you understand why maybe a color didn't work out for you in the past or help you understand what someone's saying when they're teaching because there's a lot of instructors out there who are probably talented at what they do but they're not, uh, they don't have a lot of experience in articulating their story. And so as a result of that, makes the story very, very confusing. Sometimes they don't know. And the, one of the biggest flaws we have as human beings is when someone asks us something that we don't know, sometimes we end up throwing out, I call it word salad. We just keep putting words out there, words out there, and hopefully somebody will start to nod their head yes. And I go, oh, okay, I got past that one. So uh, that's, uh, that's what we're going to do today. So, Max, anything you want to share with the group before we start off? Because we have a full agenda. <laughs> I mean, I'd say let's just get cracking. All right. All right. So let's start with the beginning. What do you say? Let's start with that thing they call the color wheel. Now, you say, well, look, I've been doing color for a long time. I know the color wheel. And the fact is you probably know it. But there's not a lot of people who understand it because, first of all, they used a tool to teach us hair color that has nothing to do with hair color. <laughs> Let me be real clear about that so you understand. The color wheel comes from the world of color, comes from the world of art. So, so when are printing? 
So when you're working with the color wheel, you know, we're using it only as a tool because our world doesn't always exist based upon the colors that you see on that color wheel. In fact, that color wheel that we all learn from is like a piece of the actual color sphere because the color wheel is not a flat wheel. It is a sphere. It's like a ball. And so it's three-dimensional. So it's like they took a center slice out of the color wheel. And that's what we all learn from. And um, here are some things I think is important for you to know about the color sphere. And I just wanna, we just wanna plant the seeds for you today. And then as we start coming back with other episodes, we'll kind of follow up on it. So the first thing, here's the most important thing. When I'm teaching color in a color class, I say to my attendees, there are three properties to the color sphere. These three properties have a major effect on how we formulate color and how we see color. The first property is something called hue, H-U-E. Hue is actually on the three-dimensional wheel, a horizontal measurement. So it's measured around the circumference of that sphere. Now, if you consider that it's a complete circle, there are 360 degrees in a circle. So potentially there are 360 different hues that we have to choose from based solely on a horizontal measurement of the color sphere. 360 and we learned 12. Max, you wanna take the next one? Sure. <laughs> So also within the color sphere, there's something that we describe as value and value lies through the center of the color sphere. And basically the value is a measurement of lightness to darkness that runs through the center of the sphere. So I want you to think of the North Pole at the top of the sphere, and that would be white. South pole at the bottom of the sphere would be black and the equator, which let's say is level five in the middle is gonna be gray. And then basically all the variations going lighter to white and deeper after that or below it, you know, run the center of the sphere. And, you know, depending on where the value is at the sphere, is at the center of the sphere is also going to uh, talk about how how deep and saturated those hues get as right. you move up and down. Right. So so value, and that's broken into ten levels, right? Yes. So when I learned level system, my mentor taught me value system first, and here's why he taught me that. And the value system. There's five values, darkest, dark, medium, light, and very light. Within those five values, the level system exists broken into 10 levels. He said, here's why you have to understand visual value first, because visual value is not based upon tone. Visual value is based upon the light to dark, light absorption versus light reflection. As you heard Max say, at the North Pole, it's white. At the South Pole, it's black. And at the equator, it's a balance between those two, which is a color called gray. Now, black, gray, and white are all three what are called anomalies, achromatic anomalies. They actually have no tone. We, we call them a color, but they're really not a color. One is absorption of all the light, one is reflection of all the light, and one is a combination of both. So understanding visual values or understanding grayscale, when I look at someone's head, helps me to identify the level more accurately. Now, I'm going to give you an example with this photograph. You'll see this <clears throat> beautiful gender-colored client. And on the left, you can see her tonality which is that beautiful ginger color in her hair. And on the right, you can see her in grayscale. Can you see how the tone has caused me to probably misread 
her actual level because the tone had gave more light reflection. And because of that, I would read that hair to be lighter than it actually is. In fact, that's what we always teach in color class. We say that red shades especially will usually reflect a half a level to a level lighter than they actually are. So value, there's 10 levels, right? Within the five values, there's 360 degree, 360 different hues. So am I, is my math right, Max? Does that mean we have actually 3,600 colors to choose from? Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, so, and we learned 12, right? We learned 12. Lucky us. Right. Now here's the third one that virtually nobody ever talks about. And when they talk about it, most of the time they get it wrong. And it's called chroma, C-H-R-O-M-A. Chroma is a radial measurement. So that's from the center of the color wheel to the outside ring. Here's what we know. The closer to the outside ring that a color sets, the more pure in tone it is. Okay, so... If it sets to the very outside of the ring, it is pure in tone. If it sets to the outside of the ring and it is lower down in the deeper levels, it is not only pure in tone, it is rich in saturation. If I take the color and put it on the outside of the ring and it is a lighter shade, it is, it is pure in tone, but it is lighter in saturation. So that's how all these different properties work together. Close to the outside of the ring, more pure in tone. Close to the inside of the ring, the more flat, drab, and muted a color is. Because the closer we get to the grayscale, the more flat and drab our color looks. There's not as much reflection any longer in the shade. Now, there's 18 chromatic rings. 18 chromatic rings, 10 levels, 360 different colors. So conceivably, there's 64,800 different colors we can choose from. And we learned 12. Just 12. So, so the next time you look at the color wheel, I want you to look at it differently. It's how I recommend that you do. Uh, because there's so many parts to that color wheel rather than just complementary colors. And that's what we all learn, right? <laughs> if you have orange, use blue. If you have red, use green. If you have yellow, use violet. That was it. That's it. It's like hair color for dummies. That's all we do. And so if I have yellow and I put violet on the hair, guess what? I'm pulling that color to the center of the wheel. And the center of the wheel is what? Flat, drab, muted, and subdued. <laughs> so we can use other colors to temper the color that we're formulating. Those colors are called harmonic. They set side by side. So we've got a lot we can do with that color wheel. Now, if this interests you, if you're intrigued, you're saying, how can I learn more? Come to one of our classes. We'd love to share with you the intricacies of the color wheel and how much we are, we're not even exposed to in our entire careers. We're exposed to just a little bit so if you want to dig deep and you want to master it and you want to really learn how to formulate and do some what we call out of the box formulation, formulating with the principles of color, not necessarily the rules that are written by a manufacturer, come to one of our educational events. So color wheel, I thought we did a good job there, Max. What do you think? Yeah. Anything you want to add to that? No, I think we covered it great. All right, super. So look, the next thing, that I think is important as well. And it's funny, you know, we still keep going back to the basics because there's still, con there's still misinformation about those. And Max, you brought that up this morning before we started our program, you were talking about, um, well, it's actually what hair contributes as it lightens. Mm -hmm. sure. um, we have different names for it. Sometimes those names cause us to think differently about what we're doing. Um, I know I, you, you guys have heard me say undertones don't exist. They don't. Underlying pigment doesn't exist. It doesn't uh, because it gives you the illusion that something's underneath. When we lighten hair, we're not uncovering something. 
we're changing something structurally. Mm -hmm. So, so that's the thing to remember when we color hair, we are not painting a post. We're not painting a wall. We are taking a chemical solution, hair color, and using it to alter both structurally and visually a chemical structure called hair, carbon, oxygen, hydrogen, nitrogen, and sulfur. So when we talk about this underlying pigments, undertones, remaining pigment contribution, there's still some controversy, right, Max? Oh, yeah, this is probably one of the most controversial subjects <laughs> in the field. Well, maybe you can shine some light on that for us. Well, um, I mean, the first, the first thing that I like to do when, when we're sort of like um, trying to demystify the subject a little bit is, you know, whatever you're going to call it, whether it's contributing pigment, um, underlying pigment, undertones, undercoats, residual pigment contribution, the, the first thing that everyone needs to keep in mind, I think, is this is not like something that just magically lives in the hair. It's something that is created as a result of the hair coloring process. Right. You know, and this can be on natural hair, but also you're doing the same thing when you are bleaching hair that has artificial color in it. You are creating a contributing pigment that is going to, you know, give you part of your hair color result. So whether it's on hair that's previously colored or natural, and then sometimes you're working on a canvas that has both natural and previously colored hair on. So then you're mm -hmm. getting different, you know, sort of levels of, uh, you know, contributing pigment. But the, the biggest thing that, you know, I have really sort of focused on as of late is it's not a one size fits all type thing. So just because, so, so basically what I'm saying is like that, not all yellow oranges are created equal. Absolutely. You yeah. know, so it's like, you know, you can, you can take three different people with three different, um, you know, backgrounds genetically, and you can lighten each of their hair to a level eight. So let's say that's like a yellow orange or what we would consider a yellow orange um, contribute level of contributing pigment. And each one of them could look a little bit different. Yes. It's not just a, a set, you know, um, everyone's going to look exactly the same. You know, you know, it's funny you should say that because I think that we, we talk about being artists. That's, you hear us talk about that. But yet some things we're so anal on, it's unbelievable because when they say yellow orange is level eight, everyone is expecting to see that. Right. But that's based upon a person's genetics, right? Yeah. And, and I think that what you were saying earlier is that it's, no, it's not a specific, it's not a finite line. Level eight is not a finite line. It is what? It's a, a range. Range, range yeah. right. Absolutely. And it depends upon the kind of pigment that's in the hair. If they have a high ratio of feel melanin in their hair, your level eight is going to be much brighter yeah. than my level eight if she's got a higher amount of eumelanin in her hair. Exactly. So those are things we have to keep in mind when we're lightening hair. It's like that. I think that's where we get in a rabbit hole where people say, well, it's not lightening. Something's wrong with the bleach. Can I get a stronger bleach? Can right. I get a higher volume of developer? Well, wait a minute. Stop. Time out. You know, is it the right head of hair that you're working on? And like, like my hair, for instance, is, is fairly deep but it does not go past this like hideous butternut squash <laughs> colored <laughs> level eight, not right. before it like just burns up and hits the ground. Yes. You know? Like you can't, I cannot get a pale yellow without my hair just, you know, right. basically being self cutting. Well, you know, I use a visual analysis whenever I'm looking about lifting a client 
I'll take that hair and I'll separate it between my fingers and I'll look at it. And if, if the hair visually has like a, a chalky cast to it, mm -hmm. where it doesn't have a lot of shine or a lot of re reflect in it, it doesn't have very many warm tones. Yeah. That sometimes is an indicator or one of the indicators that I use to tell me, well, I might have a success lightening this hair. Conversely, if I take that hair and I hold it between my fingers and I see this got a tight, shiny cuticle and it's got some warmth, that tells me, well, one of my indicators is saying you might have an issue lightening this hair. So then I'm going to look at my second indicator, which of course is eye color, to verify whether or not this person really is something that we can achieve success with. So that's huge. But yeah. <laughs> for many of us, we are like bulls in a china shop. Client comes in, she says, I want to be balayaged and I want to be the picture from Instagram. And we just go mix up our stuff, man. We come out there, we start painting. And then when we get into that, we get into a cul-de-sac, we can't get out. And we go, oh no, now what do I do? <clears throat> so it's better to make an assessment and it's better going and knowing that genetics, texture, all of these things are going to play a large role in the result, whether it's successful or not. Yeah. And, and I think we need to stop and take a, take, take a look at these things before we start to ensure success. Hey, and, and also when in doubt, do a strand test. I know yes. like, it, it's like, especially just, even if you're just working with lightener, you're going to know in five to 10 minutes, you know, right. what you're, what you're dealing with. You yeah, know, and if you can get them that yeah. light, I think as hairdressers too, like what, one of the funny things that I've always encountered in teaching classes is that like, I feel like as, as people, we really want to believe. So like, you know, like you'll be in a class and you'll be looking at someone's natural level and it's like, you know, are they a five? Are they a six? Well, they really want them to be a six so they can use high lift blonde on them, but they're actually a five. You know what yeah. I mean? Like right. you, we kind of think that we can, kind of, we can push it. And it's, a, it's the same with dealing with, um, you know, contributing pigment too. Right. It's like, I will look at it and go, okay, do I see yellow? Do I see yellow, orange? Do I see orange? And right. even if I see, if I see yellow and orange, but I see more orange than yellow, I'm going to treat it like orange. Exactly. Because exactly. it's sort of like, I, I, don't want to do things twice, you know? And it's like, you know, what's the point? Or you just end up mixing like 15 things. Right. And then what, you know, it's like you, you kind of go down a whole nother path. You know, what's funny is that this happened to me on Saturday at the salon. One of our team members, she, she came upstairs and I was sitting at the desk and she said, um, I had a question for you. I said, okay, what? And she says, well, my client downstairs you know, she's in, I'm going to do <clears throat> her blonde, going to do a go global blonding, she said, but she has a band of red or red orange that's about uh, two inches out from her scalp, and the band is about two inches wide. Do you think that uh, my lightener will go through the band? And I went, hold on, what? <laughs> the band is, what are you trying to do? You're trying to make her what? What do you call her? She goes, I'm trying to make her blonde. And I said, okay, so have you tested it? Well, no, I'm just wondering if you think it'll do it. I go, look, do not hold me responsible for <laughs> making a prediction for you. First of all, I can't see her hair. So I don't know what kind of a band you're going through. Why don't you test it? Well, I never thought about doing that. I said, well, do it now. Go down, test it. I said, you'll know. And then the first 10 to 15 minutes, whether or not you can break through that band line and I said, if you can't, then what you're going to have to do is rethink your strategies. I said, you know, if that, if, the, if it's an unnatural looking tone, like a red shade and you go to lighten it, it's just going to be a lighter version of red. Right. That shadow will still be there. See, I think people think they can lift all this stuff. They don't lift anything out. We keep, we, we use the, the poorest language to talk about what we're doing. You know, I'm going to strip the color out of your hair. You're not Ugh. stripping the color out of the hair. Well, and it, it, yeah, <laughs> it's, it's just insanity. 
So, so she went and she tested it and she was very fortunate. She was able to lighten the band successfully. She told me, I didn't see it. And, uh, that was all good, but she wasn't re She was ready to go mix up her color, and she was going to go thirty volume on that band line. Man, I'm going to kick its butt. Right. Yeah, and thirty volume. You know what it would have done to previously colored hair with bleach? It would have shredded that hair, and then she would have set that hair up to break. It happens all the time. I see. <laughs> I see people when they clients come back and. They have breaking hair. Their hair is breaking like six and a half inches out from their scalp. And they can't figure out why. And I said, okay, so what service did you give her last time? Well, I did a, her refresh of her balayage. I go, okay, great. So how'd you do your application? Well, I applied my product. And then, of course, I saw these experts on Instagram say that they always drag a little of the bleach over the old lighten section because it gets dingy to refresh it and brighten it again. And that's all that I did. And I said, okay, so how much was regrowth did she have? It's about six and a half inches. And I said, so what you did is you set that hair up to break. She goes, it didn't break in the salon. I go, that doesn't matter. Right. That doesn't matter. You took her to the edge of the precipice and you left her there. And so she goes home and you know, none of them really react, treat their hair the way we do in the salon. Right. She may have done something, twisted her wrist as she was brushing through, snap that hair. So you really should take responsible for that hair breaking six and a half inches out. And we do this all the time because we don't take time to assess what we're doing first. Right. Would, would you go to a doctor and ask him to do surgery on you without testing. No, <laughs> I wouldn't. He goes, Dad, let's just cut here and see what we see what we find. Right. You know, or, so or what if you got to like negotiate with the doctor? You'd be like, I want my appendix taken out, but I don't want you to use any anesthetic because right. I don't want to pay the extra charge. That's right. <laughs> it's a crazy world. You know, it's like it's like I don't want the toner. It's kind of the same thing. It's like, right. So I think you brought up a great point, Max, is understanding what, whatever you call it, whatever the hair contributes that you, whatever you call it, that you understand that it's not underneath anything. No. You're not revealing it. What you're doing is you're changing the hair structurally. Okay. And remember, the most important thing about that <laughs> is that whatever that color is, that the hair contributes, whatever it is, it's going to be 50% of your result. Yeah. Simple as that. And the other thing too is, is like, it's, it's actually this whole lightening process. It's not lifting out of the hair. No, nope. You're just breaking the pigment into smaller pieces. They're, right. they're still, it's still in the hair. That's right. You, know, you don't see pale yellow rinsing out of the hair when you rinse it it's it's literally just being diffused into smaller pieces which makes the hair visually look lighter because light can pass through it right more yeah. more readily yeah actually the physics of that is the hair becomes smaller so it changes in size it also changes its chemical structure so when i take and i a disulfide bond which is a what we call a uh, a um, a double paired bond, okay? And I split it; it changes the structure chemically. So I'm making it smaller. I'm changing it chemically, and I'm changing the way that the light will be either reflected or absorbed. And so, as hair gets lighter, it gets further and further outside of human vision. And so that's why we see it lighter in the hair. Wow. Those are all that stuff is going on. Yeah. There's a so, lot of moving parts and pieces that a lot I of moving parts. Yeah. I, I realize, you know, I've always said hair color is complex, but it's not complicated if you learn about the complexities of it. So uh, anything that we missed today, Max? I mean, I think we, I think we covered a lot actually.
I think we did. I think we covered a lot of information. Hopefully you found it beneficial. Hopefully you got some nuggets out of this and you're, uh, you're able to, um, you know, use those to help you be more productive in the salon. If you are watching us on YouTube, I want to thank you so much. And uh, we invite you to subscribe right here on the site. You can do it right below our screen. Uh, thank you so much. Our, our, our viewership has grown and we're grateful to you for that. So obviously you like what you're hearing. And if there's things that we can do to make it more beneficial for you, please send us a note. You can send a, a note to info at gurunation.net. And <clears throat> Max and I will make sure we get to see that information and uh, try to tailor this program for something that you know, makes it more beneficial for you. Um, our goal here is to help you become more successful. That's our total purpose, to help you discover the genius in each and every one of you. Now, you can reach Max and I, and you can follow us, and we'd love to have you follow us on Instagram. Max is at Max M Hair. Okay, that would be his, uh, his handle on Instagram, and my handle is at Real Captain Color. Remember on Instagram, a lot of the rabbit trails are posted in our IGTV spot. Uh, so we, we have those that are posted there as well. Um, plus, we're going to start doing a few live broadcasts on Instagram as well. Just to, you know, it's always good to have live interaction rather than just being pre-recorded all the time. And um, then you can follow us on Facebook. We have our, our Guru Nation Facebook page. We invite you to follow us there as well. And come visit our website, which is www.gurunation.net. On our website, we have an educational page, shows all the upcoming classes that we have coming up in our virtual classroom, which is this platform right here. We also have pre-recorded webinars that you can purchase and download. And most of them are 45 minutes to an hour, gives you some key points and different subject matter and uh, some nuggets that will so help you as you move along in your color career. We invite you to visit our gallery, which has some videos from classes that we've done um, when we were actually able to do physical classes in the field. And then it gives you an insight into what a Guru Nation event would look like in uh, your city or your town. We are hoping that we get to start doing that again. Um, you know, it looks like the world is kind of changing a little bit, so it's possible at the latter part of the year, we'll be able to do some of those things. But uh, we hope you've enjoyed it today. And um, <clears throat> Max, as always, it's been a pleasure. Thanks so and, much for uh, having me. Yeah, it's been great, man. I love doing these programs with you. And wait, wait, wait. Oh my God, Max, I hear our ride. It's here now. <laughs> so you need to pack your bag, buddy, and meet, me, right. in the, meet me in the clearing. Uh, listen, everybody. Uh, we wish you a great weekend, and uh, whoever you're rooting for at Super Bowl, we hope your team wins. How's that? <laughs> you guys have a great Sunday. We'll see you again soon. Don't forget to follow us on Instagram, and don't forget to watch for Say What. It will be here soon. Until then, from my heart to yours, I'm Captain Color. I'm out of here. Max, thank you, my friend. See you all. See you later, Dennis. Have a thank great you. day. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.